Family lore tells us Elijah Pepper made his first whiskey in the outer regions of Virginia in 1780, during the American Revolution. In 1812, he established a distillery on Glens Creek near present-day Versailles, Kentucky. After Elijah's death in 1833, his son, Oscar Pepper, took the brand to new heights, expanding the distillery and hiring Scottish chemist Dr. James C. Crow as his distiller. Together, they perfected the sour mash process for making whiskey, revolutionizing the industry, ensuring quality and consistency from one batch of whiskey to the next. Before long, Pepper whiskey had become a standard across the land, enjoyed by Senators Henry Clay and Daniel Webster and Presidents Andrew Jackson and Ulysses S. Grant. In 1865, Oscar died unexpectedly, leaving his then 15-year-old son, James E. Pepper, at the helm of the distillery business and family legacy. Funded by a loan from Colonel E.H. Taylor, James's guardian, trusted family friend and future whiskey baron, James began an ambitious expansion of the distillery. But in 1878, after struggling to pay back the loan, Taylor took possession, later selling the distillery to Lebro and Graham. Today, that same property and the historic buildings are home to the Woodford Reserve Distillery. In 1879, James E. Pepper was able to raise the capital to build a new pepper distillery in nearby Lexington. It was the largest and most technologically advanced distillery in the nation. In 1890, frustrated with counterfeiters, Pepper convinced the state of Kentucky to change its laws so that he could bottle his own whiskey at his distillery. Prior to the change, distillers could only sell their whiskey by the barrel. If their product was bottled, it was done by whomever purchased the barrel from the distillery, often leading to fraudulently refilled bottles. Bottling his whiskey at the distillery allowed Pepper to guarantee the quality, and he did so with his trademark strip stamp bearing his signature across the cork, sealing the bottle. A hallmark was born. Old Pepper Whiskey became the toast of the country. A flamboyant promoter, Colonel James E. Pepper proudly advertised that he still used his grandfather's original Revolutionary War recipes cleverly marketing his family brand of whiskey with the slogans, Born with the Republic, Old 1776, and the oldest and best brand of whiskey made in Kentucky. He traveled the country in a private rail car named the Old Pepper, painted with the label of his beloved brand. For 20 years, the Pepper brand enjoyed great success and worldwide exposure. But the biggest obstacle for the Pepper brand and distillery was Colonel Pepper himself. He lived his life and promoted his brand with a lavish and extravagant approach. He operated the finest thoroughbred horse farm in Kentucky, racing his stable in the legendary Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks. But in the mid-1890s, there was an overproduction in the whiskey industry. Demand dropped and prices were slashed. Colonel Pepper became financially overextended and once again was unable to pay his creditors. By 1896, with bankruptcy looming, Pepper's distillery and beloved Meadowthorpe Thoroughbred Horse Farm entered foreclosure. Colonel Pepper fought back, but his creditors forced an auction of his prized stable of horses. Luckily for him, the highest bidder was his glamorous and savvy wife. Ella Offit Pepper, as nobody in Lexington would bid against her. Ella took up racing and subsequently began selling her prize-winning horses. Enjoying great success, she accumulated enough money to purchase the distillery out of foreclosure. National newspapers took notice. Ella was bestowed the title, the Queen of the Turf. 
Together, the Peppers became famous for both the Pepper Whiskey brand and their thoroughbred horses. They traveled throughout the United States and Europe, racing their stable, once outracing the King of England's horse to win the Doncaster Cup in Great Britain. They also spent considerable time at the legendary Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York City, where they would socialize with other American captains of industry. It was said that James E. Pepper introduced the recipe for the old-fashioned cocktail to the Waldorf, thereby introducing to the world the cocktail that had originally been created in his honor at the Pendennis Club in Louisville. For a time, the Pepper brand seemed destined for continued success and greatness. That is, until in 1906, when Colonel Pepper slipped on an ice-covered sidewalk in New York City. Days later, he passed away. Distraught, his grieving wife Ella sold the distillery and the beloved Meadowthorpe farm and all the horses, except for one, Prince Pepper, for whom the Imperial Stud Farm of Japan had once offered any sum of money. The Roaring Twenties brought new challenges. Prohibition. The Pepper Distillery ceased production, but the already barreled and aged Pepper whiskey was bottled and sold for medicinal purposes. Tragically, the old Pepper Distillery burned in a devastating fire in 1933. In 1934, the year Prohibition was repealed in Kentucky, a new distillery was built on the exact same footprint. Distilling once again resumed. The brand continued to thrive after Prohibition, but by the early 1960s, the Kentucky bourbon industry encountered hard times, and in 1967, the Pepper Distillery in Lexington ceased production. In time, both the James E. Pepper brand and distillery were abandoned and forgotten. The glory and legacy of the Pepper name was gone. Until one day, when Amir Pei, an entrepreneur, whiskey connoisseur, and history buff, made an extraordinary discovery. I'm a big boxing fan, and one day I was looking at some historic Library of Congress photos from the famous Jack Johnson and Jim Jeffries Fight of the Century on July 4th, 1910. And in one of those images, it showed the two boxers in the ring, and in between them was a big banner, and it said, James E. Pepper Whiskey, born with the Republic. I embarked on a campaign of extensive historical research, collecting old vintage memorabilia, artifacts, documents, including a large collection of vintage, original, perfectly preserved Pepper Whiskey from before, during, and after Prohibition, along with original letters from James E. Pepper from the 1890s, the original recipes, mash bills, production methods from the distillery, along with a detailed set of mechanical engineering drawings from the original still system built at the distillery in 1934, the year Prohibition was repealed in Kentucky. After years of planning and hard work, the distillery was renovated and rebuilt. On December 21st, 2017, the Pepper Distillery filled its first barrel using the same bourbon recipe as when it shut down in 1967. Once again, locally grown corn, rye, and barley are being mashed with limestone water from the original well, then fermented and distilled within these old walls. Initially relaunched and revitalized under the 1776 and Old Pepper labels, the Pepper brand is now once again receiving grand recognition on the world stage of whiskey, while at the same time historic recipes and new flavorful whiskies are being distilled on site for future releases. What was lost so many years ago has at long last been found and reimagined.